from Learfield Sports on the Aztec Sports Network. Live from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, it's the Aztec Coaches Show, presented by Verizon. Throw back to the near side, touchdown Aztec! The Aztec Coaches Show is brought to you by Quality First Real Estate. For residential real estate needs, it's Quality First at QualityFirstRealEstate.com. Proud sponsor of Aztec Athletics, Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, San Diego's most authentic Irish Pub and Grill, and proud host of the Aztec Coaches Shows. And by Quality First Commercial Real Estate. For commercial real estate needs, it's Quality First at QualityFirstCommercial.com. Proud sponsor of Aztec Athletics. Now, live from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, it's the Aztec Coaches Show. Here's your host, Chris Ello. Hey, let's go crazy, folks. Welcome to Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill. It is Wednesday night. It is time for the Aztec Football Coaches Show from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill here in Grossmont Center. You guys can do a little better than that. The, the Aztecs won 52-14 to 14 last week. Let's hear it. Come on now. Come on, you guys can do a little better than that. Hooley's home to the famous corned beef tacos, other award-winning menu items, and, of course, Wednesdays throughout the season. Right here at Hooley's in uh, Grossmont Center, we have Coach Rocky Long live on site for the next hour. We'll be talking with him about Aztec football. also want to thank our friends at Quality First Real Estate, San Diego's top real estate company. We can help you buy, sell, and manage San Diego real estate. When it comes to real estate, it's always Quality First. Click QualityFirstRealEstate.com. Allow me to introduce the head coach of the San Diego State Aztecs, Mr. Rocky Long. <laughs> coach, congratulations on the victory Saturday night over the University of Hawaii. I uh, had a chance to visit with you a little bit Monday morning. Uh, I was at your uh, media press conference on Tuesday, which was yesterday. And uh, on both occasions, you didn't seem like the kind of the, a coach who had just won a game 52 to 14. You, you weren't. I'm not going to say that you were dissatisfied with your team's performance, but uh, you 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 seem like uh, the kind of coach that felt like uh, we're halfway through the season and we still have a lot of work to get done. I think you got me just right. <laughs> I, I, you know, you're always happy to win, and, every, and the players are much happier. They've got more confidence. We practiced a little bit better the last two days, and all those sort of things, and. And it's nice to go out and perform well. And now I, I think that uh, the team we were playing was a little beat up and a little tired and that sort of thing. But I've seen teams like that where you go out and don't play like you, like you should and they, they end up winning the game. And they had plenty enough athletes to beat us. But if you take the first half of the season as a whole, uh, we want to be a good football team and we're not a good football team yet. We're, we're a competitive football team. And we're 500 and all those sort of things, but we want to be we want to be better than that. I mean, and we've got six more games to play, and and we've got some goals at the end of the six games. So, if we're going to reach our goals, we have to play a lot better than we did Saturday because we're going to be playing better teams. When you talk about uh, the first half of the season and playing a little bit better, what are there any things in particular you're talking about? Uh, was there anything particular in the Hawaii game that you guys did do better than you had been doing in previous games? Well, I, obviously, we played a lot better defense than we have been in the last three weeks. Uh, <clears throat> some of that was we were playing against a different offense, but, but some of it was our players performed better. I mean, our defensive line held the line of scrimmage against the run. They rushed the passer a little bit better. We got more heat on the quarterback, and our coverage was better. I mean, it all goes together, and you and I have talked about it for three weeks. It all goes together. Your coverage is better if the quarterback has to throw it on time and he can't wait until guys come open and all those sort of things. So we were a little bit better up front, which meant our coverage was better and we played a lot better on defense. Uh, we did some really nice things on special teams, but we're still very inconsistent on special teams. And then I, and then I was, uh, as well as we've been running the ball, I thought other than the design plays for Ryan Katz that really busted it open, I thought Hawaii did a really nice job against our base running game. And that's, uh, I don't, after watching them on film, I don't think they should have. And we're going to play some teams that are better up front than Hawaii was. And, and we've got to be able to continue to run the ball. 
Last couple of games, both Adam and Moema and uh, Walter Casey have been held in check a little bit uh, against Fresno State. They combined for 94 yards. Last week, they combined for 101 yards. Are teams starting to put more players, as they say, in the box and uh, kind of jam the line of scrimmage a little bit to try and take away your running game? And if so, what are you going to do to counterbalance that, counteract that as the season moves along? Well, obviously, they, they are... They know we're pretty good at running the ball, so they are putting more guys in the box, and they're putting guys closer to the line of scrimmage to make it harder to run. Uh, and the counter to that is you fake, you fake the run, and you have to beat them deep, which we did a couple times. We beat them on deep passes a couple times. Now, we've got to beat them a little bit more than we did Saturday. Uh, I say that, and we scored 52 points. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know how you can say that if you scored that many points. But we did. I mean, when they stacked the line of scrimmage, we threw the ball over the top of them a few times, made a couple nice catches, and scored some touchdowns. And then the other part is that you can get an extra blocker by making your quarterback a running back. Just like you see on TV where they put a running back back there at shotgun or they put a wide receiver at shotgun and they call it the wildcat or whatever everybody calls it. Well, we have a quarterback that can run, so we keep our quarterback in and run those same plays with our quarterback. Yeah, and it worked really well. I mean, I thought that was what blew open the game for you. You mentioned it earlier. Ryan Katz was the uh, uh, the Mountain West Conference Player of the Week. Uh, he had five touchdowns in that game on Saturday night, three of them running the ball, and two of them were designed calls. I thought Coach Andy Ludwig, your offensive coordinator, really came up with some very good plays that worked perfectly against Hawaii's defense and uh, allowed Ryan Katz the, the openings to score those two touchdowns. And then he got a third on a scramble. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I thought we did a nice job. Our coaches did a nice job of scheming things that would work against that defense and using the, our other part of our running game as a disguise. They were so heavy against the runs that we normally run, the power play and all that. Uh, you show the power play, and then you run a power play opposite where you showed it, uh, using the quarterback as the running back and pulling people back over there. And uh, our kids executed it really well. I mean, they blocked everybody. Ryan didn't have to make it. Well, on one play, he had to make the free safety miss. On the other play, he had to get out of the reach of a defensive end, and then there was nobody after that guy. And uh, talk about uh, the, the uh, wide receivers in this game against Hawaii. Katz was 15 out of 29, couple of touchdown passes. Uh, beautiful catch by Bryce Butler for a touchdown in this game. And uh, I, I think you're not having any breakout. To, well, you're having a couple of little breakout games, four or five catch games. You haven't had anybody have a big 10, 11 catch game. But that, does, that seems like the way this offense is designed, to spread it around, try and get everybody four or five catches. Well, I mean, early in the season, we, we had a couple of breakout games, and then the next week they only, you know, I, I forget, Ezell Ruffin caught seven passes for 200 yards or something, and everybody thinks he's going to be this superstar, and all of a sudden the next week he doesn't catch a pass. Well, I mean, as soon as one has a breakout game, uh, the other team will design something, make it hard for you to throw it to them. So if, you're, if you have a good plan, which I think our offensive coaches do a great job with the plan, if you have a good plan, you spread the ball around so that you don't concentrate on just using one guy all the time. Quarterbacks can kind of get narrow-minded at times, and they look for just one receiver. If you let a quarterback get like that, and he always looks for the same receiver, well, a defense can take that receiver away. As long as they don't have to worry about the rest of them, they can take that receiver away. But if you're spreading the ball around to a bunch of guys, they can't concentrate on one guy. And so we try to get matchups, and they have packages. They have packages of running plays for Adam Moema. They got a package of running plays for Walter Casey. They've got, they've got packages for each receiver on trying to get him the ball. Uh, so if you try to take one away, use the other guy. And if, if uh, they're one-on-one -on -one coverage and he, he's five foot eight, well, then you put Bryce Butler on him because he's six foot three. And that was not bad coverage, but he couldn't get to the ball. We have the same problem on the other side sometimes. We, we play five foot nine uh, cornerbacks, and they're covering six four wide receivers, and everybody wonders they're right there. How can how come they can't make the play? Or, or you try to uh, cover Gavin Escobar, and he's six foot six and weighs two hundred and fifty pounds, and you're covering him with a six foot one hundred and seventy pound guy. I mean, it it works both ways. But uh, so we have packages on offense, so all those guys should get some throws. I thought one of the great plays in the game on Saturday night was Adam Moema's thirty one yard uh, touchdown reception on a screen pass. Uh, he had a touchdown running the ball. He scored a touchdown in seven consecutive games. This young guy, just a sophomore, has really, really played well, run the ball well for you all year long. But he catches a screen pass out in the flat, and 
He was hit, I think, at the 15-yard line, 12 or 15-yard line, and he carried seven or eight guys into the end zone on his own. I mean, well, he had some help. Your guys were pushing. No, I, I, they I were pushing. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a rugby scrum, yeah, but it was. was an amazing play by Adam Awema, and I thought that you'd talk about that because that's the kind of effort I know you're looking for and coaches love to see. Well, that's, that's one of those fun plays to watch. Yeah. I mean, especially since you're the one that scored the touchdown, right? But he, he got hit. I don't know. I think you're right. I think he got hit about the 12 or 13-yard line. And then he was struggling with one guy, and then one of their other guys came in and grabbed a hold of him. Then pretty soon three or four of our offensive linemen came on the other start and kept pushing him. So I think everybody pushing against each other kept at him up. If yeah. they wouldn't have been in that pile, I think he probably would have gone down. But since they were pushing on both sides, and I think we outweighed him a little bit when the four offensive linemen got there. I think we pushed him into the end zone. And both sides pushing against each other, the running back couldn't fall down. It was a beautiful thing to see, and the Aztecs went on to beat Hawaii 52-14, to San Diego State, evening its record at 3-3. Three and three. Coming up this Saturday, a battle with the Colorado State Rams. And I uh, want to remind you that tickets are still available for this Saturday's homecoming game as the Aztecs welcome Colorado State into Qualcomm Stadium. Tickets for the game started only is it $8, Jeff, or is it $11 for the uh, tickets? Uh, it says 11 here, but I think you can get tickets for $8. Kickoff is at 345 this Saturday afternoon to purchase tickets. Call 619-283-SDSU or log on to GoAztecs.com. Also want to remind you, fans, that the Warrior Walk will take place at 145 this Saturday afternoon. That's two hours prior to kickoff. Be part of this tradition when the team makes the walk into Qualcomm Stadium, starting in the E3 F3 parking area and finishing in Aztec Village in parking area F1. Be sure to be part of the fan favorite and cheer on the team as they prepare to take on Colorado State this Saturday. Let me pass out the phone numbers if you'd like to join the program this evening. We'll be here with Coach Rocky Long until 8 o'clock. If you're listening in town, you can call us at 858-569-8255. That's 858-569-TALK. And if you are watching on the Internet or listening on the Internet anywhere, you can call us toll-free 800-600-5646. That's 800-600-COGO. We will also take questions from you fans here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill. When we come back, we'll take a look ahead to Saturday night's game against Colorado State. It is the Aztec Football Coaches Show. Chris Ello along with Coach Rocky Long from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, your official sponsor, the Aztec Coaches Show with Rocky Long on News Radio FM 95.7 and AM 600 Kogo. Welcome back to the Aztec Football Coaches Show. Ladies and gentlemen, a big house here tonight at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Grossmont Center. I want to remind you, Hooley's also located in uh, my hometown of Rancho San Diego. Award-winning food, great draft and bottled beer selections, and fantastic happy hour specials as well. Click Hooley's.com for directions and more. Hooley's, the official host location of the Aztec Football Coaches Show. And if you are interested in buying, selling, or leasing a commercial property, Quality First Commercial is a full-service commercial real estate firm. Visit our website, qualityfirstcommercial.com. QFC is here for all of your commercial real estate needs. The Aztecs at 3-3, three 1-1 and three, one and one in the Mountain West Conference after a 52-14 victory over Hawaii last Saturday night. Now comes the Colorado State Rams, a team that uh, opened the season very impressively, Coach. Uh, they beat their uh, cross-state uh, rivals, the University of Colorado, out of the Pac-12. But since then, they've lost five straight. They're one and five, but I think they've played a pretty tough schedule. They've played San Jose State. They've played Fresno State, a couple of teams that you've played. Um, this is a one and five team in record only. I mean, this is a, a dangerous side that's coming in here Saturday night. I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, San Jose State beat them, though. They beat us. You know, Fresno State beat them. And they played Fresno last week, and, and I'm, I was – obviously very impressed with Fresno State after we played them and they played them really really well especially on defense they Fresno had a, a tough time throwing the ball they had a tough time scoring points now Fresno played really good defense too and I think the game ended 28 to 7 I think that was the final score but but uh, they get better every week and their defense has gotten a lot better in the last two weeks uh, they lost a quarterback in the Air Force game. They have a quarterback that uh, played most of the Air Force game and then started his first game last week, uh, transfer from uh, Kansas State, I think. Uh, and he was much, much better in the Fresno game than he was in the Air Force game. So 
if you listen to what they're saying, this is going to be their breakout game. You know, it's it's interesting when you get on online and see what other coaches say, or you read newspapers from the other town and all that stuff, and they believe they're getting better every week, and that this week is their breakout game. What do you know about their head coach? They have a new head coach here, Jim McElwain, used to coach at uh, the University of Alabama, if I'm not mistaken, uh, taken over at Colorado State. Are you unfamiliar with him, or do you have contacts that know him pretty well? I know that their offensive coordinator used to be your offensive coordinator in New Mexico, right? So you've got that going for you, which is nice. Well, I, I don't know if that's good or bad. I that's, mean, that's, you know. that's not good that you, don't, that you know their offensive coordinator so well? Well, I mean, he also knows our defense really well, too, because he was our offensive coordinator for three years and so you play and practice against each other every day in practice so he kind of understands our defense probably a little bit better than most people do so so we are familiar I mean that way we're familiar he understands us and and we kind of understand him I don't know the head coach very well we obviously been in meetings together and talked and all but we're not you know we don't have a past uh, but he's been a very good coach. He's been in the NFL a little bit. He's been a, around a lot of places. He's done a great job. And like you said, he was the offensive coordinator at Alabama when they won the national championship. So he knows what he's doing. They have a running back, too, uh, Chris Noki, who had, uh, I think, 232 yards rushing against you guys last year. And that puts a frown on your face. You don't like anybody rushing for that kind of yardage against you. Uh, he was hurt a little bit earlier this season, but he's healthy now, starting to get back into gear. So... I imagine he's somebody you need to focus on. But at the same time, I, they have some very good weapons at wide receiver, too. I mean, this Lou Greenwood, uh, I know he had a big game last year up there in, uh, in Fort Collins when you guys beat them 18-15. to 15. So they've got weapons in the pass game and the run game. Yeah, they do. And, and they're an experienced offensive line, too. I mean, I think four of the five guys were starters last year. And then the fifth guy was a starter the year before that missed last year because of injury. So they have five veteran offensive linemen. Uh, you already mentioned the running back. He tore us up last year, and I'm sure he's excited about playing against us again. And they, as, as you said, they have a couple, three. Actually, they have one tight end. He's listed as a tight end. Most of the time, he plays the slot. And, and then they have three wide receivers that are really, really good players. So uh, they, they have some talent. And if you look at the history of the, the series between San Diego State and Colorado State, the games are always close. They, they've been, I think, three-point games two out of the last three years. It's been a three-point game. Yeah, last year the Aztecs won up there. and that was, a, that was a very pleasant evening, I remember, last year in Fort <laughs> Collins. For those who uh, didn't make that trip, uh, it was windy. It was blowing uh, hot dog wrappers all over the field. And somehow uh, Abel Perez stepped up and kicked a game-winning field goal for us, 18-15. to 15. But the year before the game played here in San Diego was another tight one, 24-19. to 19. So you're right. Always seem to be close games when the Aztecs match up against Colorado State. Game time kickoff is at 345 this Saturday afternoon. We talked about their offense and some of the weapons they have. How about the confidence level of your defense? Did it go up uh, in the victory over Hawaii? Or do you feel a little better about things? I, I think our confidence level, uh, the players have a lot more confidence now than they did a week ago. Yeah. I mean, after you get uh, shellacked like we did at Fresno with the, them throwing the ball and then we only give up 100 and something yards throwing the ball, even though the offense is different, it's got to give you some uh, confidence. I think it gives the defensive line some confidence that they can actually rush the passer. Uh, now, we've got to still be able to control the run. I, I think that Colorado State is a lot like us. I, I think they want to run the ball to set up play-action pass. And as you mentioned, they have a very good running back, and I already told everybody that they have a really experienced offensive line, so we still have to be able to try to control the run, but we can't give up a, you know, a big pass play here or there. I mean, but I think our defense is a lot more confident this week than they were last week. Well, we'll find out uh, Saturday night, Aztecs and Colorado State. Are there some fans here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill? I know Polly will walk around with the handheld microphone. We'll have some questions for Coach Rocky Long. That's coming up in our next segment. First, we have to take a Kogo News update break, and we'll do that and then return with more of the Aztec Football Coaches Show from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Grossmont Center. Chris Sello along with the Coach Rocky Long on News Radio FM 95.7 and AM 600 Kogo. Welcome back. It is the second half of our Aztec Football Coaches Show tonight from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Grossmont Center. Chris Sello along with the head coach of the Aztecs, Rocky Long. In this segment, we'll give you guys a chance here at Hooley's 
a chance to ask some questions of Coach Rocky Long. Polly, uh, do we have some questions? we got a few. Okay, so we'll get to those shortly. Your chance to talk to Rocky Long. If you're listening to the program, you can call in as well. 858-569-8255 or toll-free anywhere, 800-600-5646. Uh, defensively, let's go back to that just real quick for the, uh, the game against Hawaii. I thought a couple of guys who hadn't been starting or, you know, had been contributing but hadn't been starting played very well. One was King Holder, who uh, was pressed into service in one of your cornerback spots with Josh Wade having a little injury. And then the other guy who is really starting to step up a little bit looks to me like Derek Largent, uh, this uh, junior college transfer linebacker, starting to make some plays for you and get a little bit more confidence. Can you talk about those two kids? Well, King's been in the program for a couple years now. And uh, other than he's not very tall, uh, he's got a, a lot of athletic ability and does a really good job in man coverage. Uh, he, he made a lot of plays on Saturday night. I mean, uh, supported the run well. Uh, made a tackle for a loss. Uh, his coverage was good almost the whole night. He uh, probably should have had an interception late in the game. He, he made a great break on the ball and uh, could have intercepted it but dropped it. But uh, I, I thought he played really, really well. And that's good. Now, he's been playing a lot more than people realize yeah. because he was one of the three corners, and we rotate kids all the time in and out on defense. So he's played a lot more football than people realize. Now, since he started, I guess people watched him a little closer, and he did make some plays. Derek Largent has a, a lot of potential, and and he gets a little bit better each week. He understands our defense a little bit better each week. Uh, he's a big, strong, fast guy that can rush the passer. He, he can cover people. He's good in pass defense. Uh, and uh, what people have seen is him on a blitz or two when he accelerates and gets to the quarterback, which is really a good sign. So... And he, and he actually came from junior college, but he has three to play three. So he, he'll be here two more years after this one, not just one more year after this one, which is uh, really good for the future. That is good. And, and, you know, your defense, I was looking at this the other day. Uh, I know that people uh, have looked at your defense this year, and we've seen some games where you guys have not played as well defensively as I know you would like to. But... You're only starting two seniors on this entire defensive squad. The, the two that I see are Leon McFadden and Josh Wade. And then last week, you didn't even start Josh. You started King Holder. So just one senior, that means that all of these kids are going to be in the program at least for another year. And in the case of Derek Large, in two more years. Does that make you feel a little bit better about uh, the future of your defense as we move along here? Well, I, I mean, in the, at linebacker and in the secondary, uh, we don't have seniors. But we've had, we have guys that have played quite a bit of football. So we expect them to play well. Where we, right from the start, we talked about our inexperience in the defensive line. And, and that might be the toughest place to play. Uh, and they are getting better slowly, but we are getting better in the defensive line. So if you bring back all the, the juniors that we have in the secondary and all the sophomores and juniors we have at linebacker, and the defensive line comes back next year uh, after having a total season of them maturing, uh, yeah, we ought to be pretty darn good on defense next year. Should be a whole lot better. I wanted to ask you one question. This is a question that I've been asked uh, a few times in the past, and I've never passed it along to you during the coaches' show. But Leon McFadden always lines up, uh, lines up at left uh, cornerback, which is the right side of the offensive formation, the left side of the defensive formation. Have you ever thought to move Leon McFadden around the field to shadow the other team's number one receiver, uh, or do you just like keeping him over on that left side of the defense? Well, he's on the left side of the defense because most quarterbacks we play are right-handed, and obviously they like to throw it to the right more than they like to throw it to the left. Not all of them, but the majority of them do. Okay. Uh, what happens is they do that some in the pros, okay, where they have their best cover guy shadow a guy, and he... But that involves the other 10 guys. So if you start moving him around with one receiver, the other 10 guys have to learn to adjust their coverages 10 or 15 different ways. Mm -hmm. Now, we're a pretty complicated defense, and we had to scale back because we were making a lot of technique errors and all that sort of thing. If you, if you try to do that in college, we don't have enough time. Uh, NFL players go to work at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. They meet. 
they practice, they lift weights, they go home at five. They're there all day long. It's a, it's a true profession, and they work really hard at it. We get them for a total, including the game, a total of 20 hours a week. Including the game. Including the game. They so give these four-hour games kill you. you got to start getting some of these games over <laughs> in three hours so you could have more practice time. Well, the rule is you have to count three of those hours, okay, Yeah. for the game. So, so we actually have 17 hours during the week which includes meetings, lifting weights, and practicing. So, to be honest with you, you'd have to have the smartest kids in the world to have one guy mirror, unless you play only one coverage. If you play only one coverage, you could get it done. Okay. But if you're going to play three or four coverages, everybody else has so much to learn with him flipping around gotcha. that it's – we don't have enough time to teach it. Excellent explanation to that. All right, let's get some questions from the uh, audience here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill for Coach Rocky Long. Yes, a uh, question for Coach Long. How are you, sir? Yeah, congratulations, Coach. Uh, my name is Levi from Casa de Oro, and appreciate you guys being out here tonight. Um, first, I got a couple questions for you. First comment uh, actually is if you can give us a uh, injury report, particularly with Sam Meredith, uh, how he's doing, as well as I saw Feely kind of favoring an arm. I don't know if there's anything to read into that. And also, one of our running backs had surgery uh, a couple weeks back, um, hernia. So if you can give us an update on that. Uh, number two pertains to special teams. Uh, looks like they were doing uh, great on coverage, but I think I saw a couple of block in the backs. Uh -huh. They're killing me with that. It's 15 yards, right, I think, on that penalty. What, I didn't play ball, but what makes a player block in the back? Is it fatigue? Is it coaching? <laughs> Help me out, coach. It's coaching. It's all the coach's fault. <laughs> I, 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 like the, I like that question. I mean, I, I, it's an interesting deal. Let's, let's get back to the injuries first so I don't forget. Jake Feely and Sam Meredith both had what, what players and coaches call stingers. They have a pinched nerve in their neck, and, and so they lose feeling, and it hurts for a while, and then it comes back, so they're going to be okay. Okay. Uh, oh, and Desan Hardwick is the young man that was playing running back for us, had to go get surgery, hernia, the sports hernia surgery, so he probably won't play this year. Now, he's back out there, but he's not practicing yet, so he probably won't play the rest of the year. Now, the block in the backs. Uh, obvi obvi obviously, they're not taught to be blocking in the back, and – and we had a couple really nice returns that got called back because of clipping, which is uh, hitting somebody in the back. Um, what makes a player do that? Uh, <laughs> That's a great question because no. they do it in high school, they do it no, in college, no. they do it in the pros. I, I, you know, being it's so long ago that I played, you know, sometimes you forget. Players are taught a technique, and if they use the technique properly, they can block the usually can block the guy the proper way, but they want to do so well, so bad at times that they'll see a guy and they actually in their minds they believe they're going to block the guy on the side, and it's not going to be a penalty because they want to do their part. They and in football they want to hit somebody, and part of a return is guys block. So, so if I see a return man going down the sidelines and the only guy that's going to tackle him is the guy I'm supposed to block, in my mind, I see my head going in front and blocking him the right way. In reality, I hit him right in the back and it all gets called back and it's a 15-yard penalty. It's, it's just player. To be honest, it's players trying to make plays. And they, and they want to help the team and they want to make a play. And sometimes they're dumb. There you have it. I can't add anything to that. Uh, any other questions for Coach? We had another question for Rocky Long. Yes. Uh, hey, Bob. No, I, no, I, I, cho I chose not to. <laughs> Are you passing on your question? Passing on your question? All right. So do we have any other ones, Polly? Running around there, getting some questions at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach. Two questions. Uh, first on defense. The second one will be on offense. Uh, you said you scaled back your defense to make it a little simpler to correct some errors. Was Hawaii adequate enough to test your uh, scaled back theory uh, going into Colorado State? And the second question will be, uh, it seems like every game a different member on the offense steps up to, to fill the gap. In this case, this past game against Hawaii was uh, Ryan Katz, who stepped up and uh, did a lot of scrambling for a lot of yardage. 
uh, because our running backs weren't making as much yardage as they could have. Is it disconcerting to you that a different member of the offense has to step up each week to fill the gap, or is that reassuring to you that a different mem member of the offense can step up and fill the gap? Those are good questions. You want to host the show next week? <laughs> that was good stuff. I like that. I'll tell you what, we're getting a lot of good questions yeah, tonight. Yeah, it's good stuff tonight. Uh, because of the offense of why he ran, I, I don't know if that uh, scaling back our coverages and our defense uh, has been tested to the point that it will be when we play somebody that spreads us from sideline to sideline and throws it 55 times a game. I know our players have a lot more confidence now and they're practicing a lot better because they actually had some success in pass defense. And the only way to build confidence is to have success. So confidence is an amazing thing. We'll play. Uh, if they spread it out Saturday, we will play better Saturday because of the confidence level that we have. Doesn't mean we're going to shut them down. Okay. No, it, it's, it's not concerning to me that every week someone on offense is the guy that makes the difference that week. In fact, that's a comfort uh, because whenever you count too much on one guy, uh, if something happens to him injury-wise or something else, something happens to him and you can't get the production out of him that your team is so used to, uh, you have to be able to go somewhere else and someone else has to make a play. We talked about receivers earlier. If you have one main receiver and someone double covers him so it's hard to throw to him, guess what? You're not going to be able to move the ball thrown unless there's somebody else out there or two other guys out there you can throw the ball to. So it's, it's kind of comforting that we have more than one guy on offense that comes up with a big game. And it was definitely Ryan Katz on a Saturday night. As we mentioned earlier, he was the Mountain West Conference Player of the Week with his five-touchdown performance, three on the ground, two through the air. The last uh, quarterback to rush for three touchdowns in a game, uh, I only know this is because he told us during the broadcast was Kevin <laughs> O'Connell, who's now our sideline reporter. He wanted to make sure that he got that into the broadcast the other night. But uh, Ryan Katz had a great game on Saturday night. Aztecs beat Hawaii 52-14. Three and three is the record. Colorado State is coming to town for a game uh, this Saturday. Kickoff is at 3.45 in the afternoon at Qualcomm Stadium. Like we said, tickets are still available. If you are interested, they start at only $8. Man, that's, that's cheap. Cheaper than a movie. $8 to come and see the Aztecs take on Colorado State. Kickoff 345 this Saturday afternoon to purchase tickets. Call 619-283-SDSU. We'll come back. One final segment with head coach Rocky Long. The Aztec football coaches show from Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill on News Radio FM 95.7 and AM 600 Kogo. All right, let's finish it up strong, people. Welcome back to Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Grossmont Center, fourth and final segment with Aztec coach Rocky Long on this Wednesday. San Diego State 3-3, three and three, Colorado State 1-5. and five. That is the matchup coming up on Saturday. It is homecoming, and I know that uh, that, uh, that means a little bit more to have uh, some of your former uh, your former students uh, coming back. Of course, you've been in the program for four or five years. Will you have some players, uh, some former players come back? Do you involve them in homecoming? How do you work that this week? There'll be a lot of former players come back. Some I, some I know really well because they were just finished playing the last couple of years, and some I don't know very well. Some I know by reputation. Uh, they, they usually start showing up around Friday, you know, and then all of a sudden you go out to practice and there's 20 or 30 guys standing over there watching practice and we don't do much on Friday. And being a former player, I, I, they're probably going, you know, gee whiz, we used to practice harder than this. But, <laughs> they always say that, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 we worked a lot harder than yeah, that's this. That's right. Back but, in my day, back right, in my day, we right. worked a lot harder. But they'll, they'll show up, and it's kind of fun. We, we involved some guys earlier in the year. Uh, I think 20 or 30 of them came to practice, and then – uh, we let the guys go by position groups and talk to the guys that, you know, if I, if they were a linebacker, they went and talked to the linebacker group, and there was some interaction between our team and them. Um, you know, what's really interesting about homecoming, I hope a lot of people come. It, uh, people don't realize what a difference a really good crowd makes. They really don't. I mean, uh, our first home game against Army, we had a great crowd, and the student section was unbelievable. And there was energy in the stadium, and we played really well. I mean, well, the San Jose State game, there weren't many people there, and the, and the stadium was dark, and the stadium was quiet, and, and all those sort of things, and we didn't play well. Now, I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming the people for us not playing well. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, but when people show up at the stadium this last weekend, 
I mean, we had a huge student section. I mean, some of it, a lot of it was to be in the fireworks show was on. But we had a nice crowd, and the student section was packed, and there was energy in the stadium, and, and there was excitement when you walked out on the field. And guess what? We played really, really well. People, people don't realize how much a difference them being there makes. And, and you would hope that homecoming would get more people there and that the energy in the stadium would help us win a game. All right, for everybody listening to the program, everybody at Hoolies tonight, whoever you know who attended San Diego State University, and that's a lot of people in this town, make sure you get them out there for the game Saturday at 345. Again, tickets starting at only $8. That is cheaper than a movie night. Come on out and enjoy some Aztec football. It's time now for our California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week. California Bank and Trust, proud to recognize San Diego State's outstanding student athletes. This week, we had a question last week about this. This week's California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week is men's football star quarterback Ryan Katz. Ryan accounted for a total of five touchdowns as the Aztecs defeated Hawaii 52-14. to Last Saturday night, Ryan had three rushing touchdowns, one from 27 yards out, one from 34 yards, another from nine yards out. Also connected on two touchdown passes. He was named the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week. So far this season, Katz has thrown for almost 1,200 yards, has 11 touchdowns, only four interceptions, and uh, he'll be uh, looking to keep things rolling when the Aztecs take on Colorado State this Saturday. Ryan Katz, originally from Santa Monica, California, a graduate student majoring in educational leadership. And, of course, he played some of his career at Oregon State. We've got a couple of minutes left. How did it work out? To, how did Ryan Katz get from Oregon State to, call it, to San Diego State? That, that's kind of a new phenomenon that started over the last two or three years. And it's mostly quarterbacks. It's, there's other positions doing it, too, but quarterbacks are really doing it. Uh, if they've had uh, time at their other school where they're not going to be the starter, and Ryan was the starter at Oregon State for a while, and an injury gave another guy a chance, uh, a lot of quarterbacks start looking around and try to find a place that they'll be given the opportunity to be starting quarterback. Now, they also have to, in his case, you have to graduate from college so that you can go and be immediately eligible. So you can go as a graduate student. So when a young man's like that, he has to get a release. He has to talk to his coach. He has to get a release. And if the coach gives him a release, then they have to make contact. And once they make contact, if they have a release, you can start talking to them. And it's not the same as recruiting a high school player, but, but there is some recruiting involved. Uh, in fact, uh, Coach Chow at Hawaii told me that they were talking to Ryan Katz, too. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, and they were trying to get him to come there. So uh, there's a lot of schools. We're playing one this week. The starting quarterback from Colorado State to transfer from Kansas State. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, And last week, the starting quarterback from Hawaii was a transfer from Duke. Duke, yeah. So... <laughs> It's a, it's a phenomenon, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, Ryan Katz, a sharp guy, to be able to graduate in three years from Oregon State University so that he could come down and play his uh, final senior season here at San Diego State, and he's played very, very well. Well, that's going to wrap things up for our Aztec Coaches Show tonight. Thanks for coming on out to Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, everybody. Okay, who wants a Racky Long signed Aztec's hat? Anybody? All right, the Aztecs are playing the Colorado State Rams this week. Colorado State's team used to be known by a different nickname. Does anybody know what that was? Right there, sir, very good. They used to be the Colorado A&M Aggies. Come on up, you get a free Rocky Long signed Aztec hat. Nice job. Did you know that one too, Blytho? That's good for you. That's good for you. That was the first one you ever got. Yeah, their colors used to be orange. Step on up, he'll sign the hat for you there. Hey, thanks for coming out tonight to Hoolies. We'll see everybody at the game Saturday and see you back here next Wednesday night. Make sure you take care of your weight staff for taking care of you. And again, thanks again for coming out. Good night.